Okay, so you can see here uh, I've got what we call a turntable, but actually it's a Lazy Susan. Uh, this one is just from Ikea, uh, but you can get turntables all different sizes, shapes and prices. Uh, this one probably in the lower of the price, it's only about £5, um, but you can go right up to really expensive ones. Um, the, the, the PME one's good because it, it tilts, you put it on an angle, um, it's got a, a non-slip board on top so you can slide off the side. But um, more than ever, I use the IKEA turntable. Um, so it's, it's a lazy, season, lazy Susan. Uh, the nice thing with this one is it's very low down. So if you've got a big cake, you're not going to worry about falling over. Um, so uh, definitely an essential is getting a Lazy Susan. Okay, so what every toolbox shouldn't be short of is a sharp knife. Uh, now this sharp knife uh, isn't too expensive, uh, but it's got a very thin blade. Um, so it really cuts through sugar paste nice and thin you can see there just lift it up and you've got a nice uh, sharp cut there um, so definitely you want to have a nice sharp knife in your toolbox it's kind of like a vegetable knife okay so you can see here i've got some serrated knives in front of me so bread knife serrated knife um this cake knife this is the same product um, i've got two here i've got a domestic one uh, it's the one that's just been bought in the supermarket and i've got more of a, a professional one uh, that's um you know for the wholesale uh, market um, so obviously this is the great benefit of having one with the blade this big it's good for cutting through uh, the middle of cakes uh, and um but this one is equally as good it just means sometimes you have got to cut one side and turn the cake around and cut the other side it's so also good for carving the smaller knife, so if you're carving shapes like a teddy bear or a tank or a car, then the, blade, the smaller blade is much better. Um, and during class we use domestic knives, so they are fine, you don't have to go and spend all the money, you know, do two or three pounds or five pounds is absolutely fine for that type of knife. Um, this one's more about £20, pounds, um, but um, it's really sharp, we used to call them the jaws when you had the cake shop, because how sharp they are, so to be very careful, especially when you first get one, they're extremely dangerous, um, but very, very good, I feel dangerous holding it in my hand like this. Um, but yeah, so um, a season knife is definitely essential for a cake box as well, um, but you don't have to spend a lot of money. Okay, so I'm uh, moving on to what's called the scriber tool. Uh, I call it the pin tool, but it's a scriber tool. And it's, it's, um, the idea for this one is if you're putting a pattern on the side of the cake, you put, the you put your grease roof paper, paper, paper pattern on top of the sugar, and then you're using this to then pin the design onto the cake. And then once you've designed uh, the, the, put the pattern on, you can get your royal icing, and you can go around and join it all up, like join the dots. Um, or once you've got it on there, uh, you can then, and you've got your design, you can then use your tool to then go around and highlight the design that you've actually put on the dots, like so, okay? Um, but mainly commonly used for is getting rid of air bubbles. So there's a little air bubble there, you put it in sideways, in like that, and then rub down, and there's the air bubble gone. So that's uh, the scriber tool. Okay, so you can see here I've got some, some metal things. Uh, this is a metal ruler, or a metal rule, and a side scraper, a metal side scraper. These are um, I have used traditionally actually for royal icing uh, and more commonly for applying uh, buttercreams and ganache to the cake. Um, so this one, uh, really good for once you put the ganache on, again there's loads of tutorials on the website, for uh, scraping around the side of the cake to get a nice smooth sharp finish. And then the, the ruler is for the top of the cake, uh, again you can just pull it across the top of the cake uh, with royal icing, buttercream or ganache to get a nice smooth finish, okay? Um, this is quite a large one, you can get a smaller one. If you can't afford one of these, because they are quite expensive, I don't know how much they are, uh, you can always use the back end of a knife, um, generally the blade, uh, and then just pull it across the top. Um, but once you can afford to get one, they're definitely good. You do get plastic side scrapers, but I recommend spending the extra couple of pounds and getting the metal, metal one instead, okay? Okay, so rolling pins, uh, pretty much you can't do cake decorating without rolling pins. You can see here I've got various sizes, um, so uh, going from very large right down to the small one. So it, it's not essential, I'd say probably going for a medium sized one, uh, I think it's a 24 inch rolling pin is absolutely fine. Um, but um, you, if you have a selection then it does make your life a lot easier. Uh, now when you've got the really, really big cakes, uh, we go from rolling pin to drain pipe. And we usually use a non uh, white... Um, Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's, 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 anyway, you, you get it from the DIY shop and you just give them anti back spray to make sure they're nice and clean and it's very good to lift the sugar paste up onto the really big cakes. Um, but rolling pins, uh, all non-stick preferably. The wooden ones are okay, but they're not anywhere near as good as the plastic ones. Um, and um, 
they are expensive, they're not cheap, but the, once you've got an open, you've got it for life. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely a, a good product to get hold of. Um, so, obviously, um, for rolling out sugar paste, um, please decide. Uh, generally, even at this small piece here, I'd still use a larger rolling pin uh, for rolling out. So, um, when you're using the rolling pin, just a little bit of ice and sugar on top of the sugar paste. Uh, clean your rolling pin and then just roll. Now, every time you turn, you can see I'm just rolling out in the same direction. Lift it up. And then what you can start to do is actually use your rolling pin to lift the sugar paste. Okay, so flip it over the, the rolling pin and down. So it's a good way to uh, lift sugar paste rather than use your hands, which might be quite hot. Okay, so you can see there, using the, the sort of plastic style uh, rolling pin really does make a difference. Okay. Okay, so now we're moving on to showing you how to use this one, and this is um, this is the, the the proper name is a quilting tool, but I call it the stitchy tool, uh, which I think most people do as well, um, and it's obviously for stitch work. Um, so you've got the blade at the end here, which has got a very thin tip, and it's quite good for drawing lines because it's quite sharp, and look, you can get a nice movement from it, which works really well. Again, you can use it for getting texture. So if you're looking for the fur on an animal. Uh, like a teddy bear, it works really well for that, so that's nice. And then we've got the stitchy tool at the, the, the other end, and it's always this one that adds value when you use this one, because people are quite impressed with the little dots. And um, you can just run it round as if it's a seam of trousers, and you can see there, just going round, getting that control there. And you can see there, just gives a nice stitch detail. Uh, you can do like a double stitch if you want, which is quite nice on handbags. Uh, and you can, uh, it's one of my favourite tools, I use it all the time. And you can see there, it's just really nice. Uh, obviously, you can just do straight lines like so. So, uh, a very good tool, um, and it's what I would normally call a stitchy tool. Okay, so uh, another part of the, the toolbox that you should always have um, to hand uh, is your little cutters. Uh, they can use them for so many things. For instance, love heart cutters, uh, obviously very good for Valentines or for weddings, anniversary cakes. Just cut out, always give it a little wiggle. Uh, you can clean it with the back of your finger, uh, so that you can clean the back with your finger and then just plunge out like so and you get a nice clean cut. Now the same with the star. Give it a little clean, just pinch the ends and again just plunge that out there and you can see it comes out nice and clean. Um, another thing is uh, butterfly cutters, so these are plunger cutters. Oops, and just push down, give it a little bit of wiggle, make sure you've definitely released it from the, the sugar. Press down with the plunger, another little wiggle and then push. And you can see there, you get the nice clean cut uh, butterfly from that. Then we have the daisy cutter. Again, just push down, give it a little wiggle, and then th there's no vein in this one, so just plunge it out, and out it comes. Okay, nice and easy. Uh, we've got leaves for making flowers, so it saves a lot of time when you're making flowers. Uh, the same thing, push down, and you should end up with a nice vein there. That one's not worked out very well. Let's do another one. And... Uh, much better. There we go. And I finish off a little blossom uh, daisy cutter as well. Again, nice uh, like that. Now, they, they do do metal ones as well. So, we've got little metal love heart cutters and they're quite sweet. So, again, push down and it means you can just plunge them straight onto the side of the cake, which has got a little bit of glue on the end and you can just plunge straight on like that. Or again, just pushing it straight onto the board like that. Okay. So, that's uh, your essential cutters. Okay, so you can see here, uh, I've got a pastry brush in front of me. Uh, this is a very, very cheap one from the supermarket. I do recommend trying to spend a little bit more and get a bit more fancier one. But the silicone ones I'm not so keen on, but I do prefer the ones with the bristles on. Um, so we use this mainly for when we, we ganache cake. So once you put, applied the chocolate ganache to the cake, um, for, for the, 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 before you put the sugar paste on, uh, I like to dip this in boiling water and paint over the top of the, the ganache. It just makes it all nice and smooth before you put the sugar paste on. Also, you can use a clean one for, um, for just as a glue brush. If you maybe uh, ice in a very large space, like a board, um, then it's going to be a lot quicker doing it with this than a small uh, hand paint brush. Um, so that's the pastry brush. Okay, so um, another really essential product for the toolbox is a palette knife. 
uh, obviously for spreading uh, buttercream, ganache, royal icing onto a cake. Um, so I always recommend getting a, a good quality one. I've had these ones for probably about five years and they're still going strong. Now you can see it's a little bit twisted and, and battered, but it still works. Um, so you get all different sizes. These are the two common ones. Um, so it's a smaller one and a larger one. I use this one the most, so the larger part knife, and just really good for spreading the, the ganache onto the cake. Um, uh, same with uh, spreading royal icing on, and also the same with buttercream. Um, the smaller one's quite handy just for getting into some, some of the smaller spaces. You've got a bit more movement with it, which is good. And then you get the small, the very sort of dainty palette knives. Uh, you also get cranked palette knife, so it's with the blades sort of bent, and that just helps because you can put your hand underneath it's not going to touch the surface of the cake when you're going back and forward. Um, but as I say, I prefer to use the, the, the plain handled palette knife. Okay, so you can see here I've got a little bundle of paintbrushes. Uh, definitely need some paintbrushes for your toolbox. Now you can use uh, paintbrushes from the art shop or you can get them from the, the, the cake shop. Uh, they, they both work just as well. And uh, these two here are sort of dusting brushes. So they've got a slightly larger flat uh, blade, so to speak, and you can dust uh, quite nicely flowers with them. And these ones are a bit more precision. So uh, this one here I use probably mainly for my glue brush which is quite handy because it's a good size, but you can get thin bits on at the same time. And these ones are just really good for all round painting. So if you're painting little dots, um, uh, painting faces, painting eyes, uh, and they go right down to very, very small, it's a double zero, uh, and you can get smaller than that as well. Um, so definitely paint brushes is one of those things you need to get in your toolbox. Okay, so another uh, important uh, product for your toolbox is uh, ice and sugar uh, and a shaker. Uh, so you can see here, I've got a nice stainless steel one. It's actually glass inside and then covered in stainless steel. And it's on top, it's got uh, large holes and small holes, and then you can completely close it off uh, like so, right around there and then that, like that. Um, and it's just really good. Uh, you just pop it down on your table uh, like so, and it just dusts the table in preparation for rolling out uh, sugar paste. Okay, so you can see here in front of me, um, just one of the essential parts of a cake decorator's uh, toolkit, so to speak, is a non-stick board. Now, these come in white and green. Uh, I prefer the green ones so I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, uh, but the white ones are quite good um, just for sticking, if you want to just do white cakes, and the green ones maybe just for coloured cakes. Um, this is a really big one. You can get them slightly larger, and you get them right down to the very baby small ones. Um, they're just very good to have in the house. Uh, it's got a non-stick pad underneath, so when you're working on it, it's not sliding about your work surface. And especially if you've got a wooden work surface, it's going to save your, your tops, not so much maybe for the granite type work tops. Um, but really good to have. Uh, it fits perfectly in a suitcase. So if you're touring, you can take, the, take it away with you in your suitcase as well. Um, so uh, the one thing just to watch, not to use sharp objects on top. You can see this is covered in lots of lines. We actually use this as the for all the classes. Um, so it's more of a surface than a non-stick uh, board that we use it for. But even although it's been scraped and it's been bashed, um, it's still pretty much enough to use ice and sugar. It pretty much rolls out without sticking to the surface. Um, so um, if you're going to put that on your wish list, I'd say green board definitely. Okay, so another nice thing to have in your toolbox, but this one's not just as essential, but it does give that more professional finish uh, to your cakes. And that's using the glazes and the lusters. So what we have here is um, different makes. We've got one called Dinkadoodle, and that's a copper. Uh, we have candy pink. We have gold and we have silver and we have a glaze which gives a nice shine to your, your decorations. So for instance if we use this a pink, just give it a little shake and a little squish. Oops, let's just hold that up. So you're always best to do that. And you can see there we've got a nice metallic finish. It normally wouldn't happen, that was just because I squished it too quickly there. So a nice metallic pink colour. Uh, not not sure not very well on the, the purple. Uh, and then we have this sort of copper colour. Um, let's just see. Okay, so just hold that up. Okay, so you can definitely see that uh, showing up really nicely on there. So that's nice. Uh, and then we have the, the gold and the silver, which I'm quite sure you can work it out, but we'll just maybe use these little flowers here. So you can see there, making it silver. So I just lift that off. That's quite nice. Uh, and then just the gold one, just to show you just how it's there. So 
So it's like a very quick way to dust things or to get things to change colour uh, like that. It's got a very sweet smell. Um, and then to finish off, we have the, the clear glaze. And you'll see me use this an awful lot on the tutorials. And it just gives things a nice shine, okay? It really marks your work surfaces, so try and do it outside. Uh, but just get a little squish and you can see straight away the nice lovely shine and that'll stay like that. So really, really nice. So there we go. So that's the, the lusters and glazes. Okay, another essential for your toolbox is food pens. Uh, food pens are really good for if you're doing a model, uh, just a quick model with eyes. You can just put two dots on for the eyes, which is very, very easy. Same with the, with the bumblebee. Uh, you've also got uh, different colours. So if you have a flower paste rolled out and you actually want to write a message on it, like a newspaper or a magazine, then you can actually just draw your own detail on. And you can see here, this is a red pen there. Uh, which is good. They come in all different uh, sh uh, not shapes, all different colours. Um, so uh, licorice, the black one's my uh, favourite one. And then they've got this new product out. This is from a company called Rainbow Dust, and it's a pen stroke brush. Whoops, I was going to do that. And it's like a, it just brings out the the, the colour for you. You can see there. Um, so it's almost like a pen stroke brush, and you can just dust on, uh, sort of paint on the luster. Um, so food pens, definitely um, the black ones are the, the best one to have because you use it more and more times. And also when you, when you um, mark your dowels, uh, when you're going to cut your dowels, uh, use the food pen to then cut because obviously you don't want to use a, use a real pen. Um, so uh, definitely have a nice selection of pens in your toolbox. Okay, so you can see here uh, I've got a little box of tricks here. So it's lots of dusts. Um, so you, you look inside, um, I just have a, a used tray and then I've got a box that's got all the new ones in it. And it's all just a mix of colours, so aubergine, we've got terracotta. Uh, and if you notice these ones are gold label, so the gold label ones are tints, so they're not luster, they're just like tints for doing flowers or painting. Uh, the the luster ones are the silver label, these are all by Sugar Flare, and you've got claret, you've got pink shimmer, uh, you've got pearl white, you've uh, got lilac. So, uh, a good selection and just just build them up. They're maybe two or three pounds, four pounds, five pounds, depending on where you get them. Um, but just build them up uh, and they're really good to have in your toolbox and you, you never know when you're going to need to use them. So uh, definitely a good thing to have. Uh, the lusters I use to, to dust the, the moulds to get moulds to come out the, 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 the mould easily. Okay. Also we have this one here. This is by Squire's Kitchen and I just love it because it's just so organised. Uh, and you can see here all the dusts match the pastes, the paste colours. So you can see here we've got so lovely colours, we've got purples, greens, limes, oranges, reds, all under one uh, toolbox, which is fantastic, uh, really easy to find things. And of course, you've got the little cover that goes on the top, like so, and just push down, click, and off you go with your little toolbox. So um, definitely one of my favourite little uh, toys at the moment is having this little briefcase. Um, so it dusts, um, you can use it for almost anything in the cake decorating, and um, definitely a, a must to have in your toolbox. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to show you this one. Uh, this is the one that I would call a Dresden tool, but um, it's, it's, come, it's, its proper name, uh, via PME anyway, is a blade stroke shell tool. Uh, so the shell obviously being the part at the top there. So you push it into the ice and you can see you get like a shell effect. If I push it in here, you'll see more of a shell effect there. You can see that. Okay, so it's very good um, for doing, uh, again, texture. So if you want to get a little fur effect, it happens quite fast using this. Or even just looking for little, nice little patterns, like so, which is quite nice. This end, the blade end, is quite a thick blade. It's not a thin blade, but you can actually use it for cutting. So you can see there, especially if you don't want to ruin your green board. And you can see there, it's just cut, oops, it's just cut right through the sugar paste there. Um, so it's handy for that. Um, other things for this one, uh, I, sometimes I just use it because it's got a nice tip just for putting little dots. Okay, you can see there, just nice little dots on top. Also for neating things up, so uh, for instance, uh, let's just see. So I'm cutting a square, like so, and I want to neaten it up. I can just use it and just tuck in, turn around and tuck in, and it helps just to neat things up. Also, once you've iced the cake, if you feel like the, the rough, you've got a bit of a rough edge around the bottom of the cake, uh, you can actually use it around the bottom of the cake just to tuck the icing in around the bottom. The same with the, the shoes, when I make the shoes. Um, once I ice the, the shoe, I normally use this to tuck in the sugar paste or the flour paste underneath just to get a nice smooth finish from it. So uh, a good all-round tool, uh, one not to be without that one. 
Okay, so you can see here I've got some doweling. Um, so dowels are used uh, to support cakes to stop them from collapsing. Uh, and I use the solid one, but you, you also can get the straws, um, the bubble straws. Um, so the straw one's like this, so it's like hollow inside. Um, and it's a case of just putting the dowel into the cake. Mark the surface. Once you've got the surface, you get your wire cutters and you cut uh, the right size and put it back in so it sits flush with the cake. So the dowling is very good. These ones are, um, I think these originally came from America and uh, they're like a more of a straw. They've got a ridge down the middle of them and they work just the exact same but you can actually use scissors to cut these um, but also wire cutters as well and you just cut them to size for inside the cake. Okay, so moving on to some cutters. Uh, you can see here I've got two tins um, and one is uh, round cutters and the one is like a large daisy cutter. Um, uh, again, uh, not, not the cheapest investment, but once you've got them, just so good because you can see you can just cut out all the different size circles uh, and they're just really, really useful to have uh, for your, your tool kit. Uh, you can also just cut designs from them on, on their own so you get a nice design like that. Okay, so that's round cutters and you can just use them for a million different things. Uh, and then we have the little daisy one, which is good for like cookies. Um, so just cut down, you can see there, uh, going from the small one right up to the really big one. So really good for just for very quick uh, cake decorating or for making cookies. Uh, but you can see there you get that nice nice shape from that. Um, and the same thing, you can always just cut, uh, design it from the middle. If you're doing something a little bit funky, some flower power work. Um, so that's your round cutters and daisy cutters. Okay, so this is um, the serrated cone and tapered cone. And this one's very similar to um, the, the bone tool, so you can make, use it to make sockets. Um, so make a ball, so I'm making an arm, I can pop that in there, opens up and make, gives me a socket to put a hand in, like so. Uh, also for making flowers, for instance, if you're making like a daffodil, uh, you can make a little cone for the trumpet for the daffodil, uh, and then pop that inside, give it a wiggle round, and you can see there, I've got a little trumpet, and then to finish off the daffodil, I then put the serrated side in, and give that a shake around and it gives you that instant texture in the middle of the cone. Um, also just for doing patterns on cakes, again you've got the dots um, and then obviously you've got the cone side. Uh, again good for doing sort of um, cars and boats, it kind of gives that sort of little um, sort of industrial feel about it. Or just doing little sparkly stars in the sky. Um, also for doing cushion work, so if you're doing like a quilted effect, uh, you can just flatten that down. Uh, Cross like so, and then put the cone at each diamond, and it gives you that quilted effect, which is quite nice. Okay, so that's the, the cone tool. Okay, so as you see here, I've got a selection of little yellow tools. Uh, now these tools come in all different uh, makes and sizes. Um, so these are the ones by PME, but there's all different makes uh, out there. Uh, they all do roughly the same job. Um, so this one's called the, the, the comb and scallop tool, but most people generally call it the smiley tool. Um, because it's got the little half scallop at the end there, okay? Uh, and uh, you can just push it into the ice and uh, you can see there you get a nice little smile. Turn upside down and we get a little sad face, like so. Um, and we you get a, a happy face, and they laugh when you push it in and pull it down, and you can see there you get a sort of big laugh, a jolly laugh from it there, okay? It's also good for just doing patterns, uh, so I'll do it on here. Uh, you can just turn it around, and you can see there you're getting like a sort of pattern going on there, which looks nice. Um, the other side is the comb, so very good for doing, if I'm doing like motorbikes or like a ship, um, or tanks or anything like that. I use this one, it's quite good just to give it almost like bolts. You can see there. Uh, so you can just get a nice pattern going from it. Like so. Uh, also you can use it for texturing the sugar paste like lines. So if you're doing hair, you can see there, you can get the nice lines from it as well. Um, so that's the, what I call the smiley tool. Okay, so this is the cell stick. Um, the cell stick comes in all different sizes um, and um, it's just really like a pencil but it's very good for fl making flowers and also for frilling. So if you want to get a really a garter frill it's quite good. I can't use it here but again frilling on the side and you go along your flower paste and you can see even you can do it on sugar paste as well you can see there it just kind of gives a nice frill effect across there like so. Also for just doing some work with like pins uh, for doing little dots which is quite good. And also even just for rolling out, if you're doing a very, very small 
uh, subject, it may be like a little scarf at winter time, you can roll it out there and then use this as a baby rolling pin just to roll things out that we want really thin, like that. So that's the cell stick and it's really good for flower work. Okay, so you can see here I've got in front of me uh, cake smoothers. Uh, I've not got a cake to demonstrate, but we've got loads of uh, cakes in the, the tutorials. And these are definitely one of the very, very, very first tools you want to buy. Uh, you don't really want to use your hands when you're smoothing off the cakes. Now, you get all different makes and models as well. Uh, I'll just stick to the same ones uh, for, forever. Uh, this one's from Ch Gem, J -E -M, cut, uh, Gem Cutters. And it's a side, it's a class side smoother. So it's got the flat edge, and it means you can go around and you can buff and polish around the side of your cake. And this one's from PME, and this is a, what I call the all-over smoother. So you can smooth the top and the sides. So just give it a good buff round and down there. Also, if you're trying to move cakes around, it's quite good to lift the cake up so you're not putting your hands on it, to then lift it down. Also, for drawing lines, you can use it to draw lines uh, to then cut things out as well. So, um, so the smoothers are definitely the must for any toolbox. Okay, so you can see here I've got some cake drums and cake cards. Uh, again, it just, you should really have these um, all the time in your house because you never know when you've got a cake coming up. And there's nothing worse than seeing a cake on a piece of wood or on a plate. So you really want to have cake drums lying around. Okay, um, so you can see here I've got a selection. So 12 inch round is the one I use the most. Uh, and then I've got a 10 inch square, a 6 inch, uh, an 8 inch uh, drum there. So these are, some people call them drums and some people come on boards, you're best to say drum and then people know exactly what you're talking about, the thick one. If you just say a cake board, um, the, 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 you could end up with one of these, um, which is what I would call a cake card. Okay, but everyone calls them differently, so just make sure you definitely ex explain what you want down the phone before you place an order. So cake cards are really good for putting under a cake if the cake's going to be sat on top of another one, so it keeps it like a table and stops them from sinking in because the dough will sit under, on, hit off underneath them. Um, also very good for just making little um, decorations, so if I was making a teddy bear or a plaque, I'd use this to make it on and then use that then to transfer it over to the actual cake itself. Um, so cake boards aren't expensive and you, ca you can recover them, so if you want to really recycle you can re cover them. You can see underneath there, uh, this one's got the, the covering, so you could uh, just put more paper over the top and, uh, and use some double sided tape to, to recover it if you want to recycle it. Um, but definitely you want to get some cake cards and cake drums uh, for your toolbox. Now we're going to move on to the bone tool. Uh, the bone tool is uh, really good for doing sockets. Um, so if we get some sugar paste, um, and not, not so much this, I mean it's good for just doing dots. And, and uh, if you're putting little silver balls or gold balls in your cake, you can put all the dots on first and then put some glue and drop your little balls, uh, silver balls into the little hole. Um, if you're making cheese, looks like it's got the cheese effect. Um, but quite good for doing sockets. So if you've got a face uh, or arms, so say that's your arm, and you want to make a little socket, you can just push it in the end and that gives you a little socket on the end like that. If you're doing a face, uh, if you're doing the eyes, so there's your little head there. Uh, so you're doing your eyes. Again, you can use it at the smaller end, just to different sizes for making sockets to then pop your eyes in like so. So also, um, this is for frilling. I've not got any flour paste here. So when you roll your flour, your flour paste out and you want to get a frill on the end of the flour paste, all you're doing is you're putting it down the side. It's not going to work because it's a sugar paste. And you frill, frill, frill. And that gives a nice ruffly style to the end of your flour paste. Um, so a really good tool also to have in your toolkit. Okay, so, uh, so here we have the, the, the ball tool. Now the ball tool is pretty much the same as the bone tool. Okay, but the ball tool is obviously a bit rounder. So it's quite good, for, again, for putting sockets. You can see there, it's got a small one, so you can do small sockets as well. So you can see they're good for a teddy bear, uh, like so. Uh, also for frilling, so if you want to do a frill, uh, you frill it around, it around the flour paste, not sugar paste, and you get a nice frill effect from it as well. So that's the, the ball tool. Okay, so now I'm going to show you this one. This is the, called the bulbous cone. Um, just always, it's a bulb shape and it's a cone. Uh, I just call it the cone tool. Um, and it's pretty much the same as the other ones. Uh, so again, you can use it to make sockets. Uh, like so. But also quite good for um, modelling, so sculpting. And all these tools are good for sculpting. So if I was making a face, I'm trying to get some creases in the face. So you can actually use it to draw lines like that. So like the... the, the um, uh, lines in a face, like the wrinkles, um, or you're trying to mould a piece in, you can use it to mould a piece in and get a nice texture. The other side there is quite handy, again just as a, 
for moulding. You can use it just to mould shapes, or you can use it just a ball uh, just to get points, uh, ball uh, sockets. Uh, and sugar paste as well. Um, so it's not one I use as, as much as the other ones, uh, but it is good, as I say, just to sort of get nice shapes when you're doing some sculpting. Um, so that's the, the bulbous cone.